You're listening to The Pittsburgh Pile Driver. What the hell is that? Podcast. Happy Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast Day. That's right, Rusev Day's out. He can't use that name anymore because uh, why would he? WWE can't see talent when it's slapping them in the face with their dicks. Don't worry, this isn't the dick episode, but we're going to have one dick reference in it, and that was the one right there. So, since Rusev Day is out, Pittsburgh Pod Driver Podcast Day is in. And you know what day that is? It's whatever day you turn on this stupid podcast and listen to it. Happy Pittsburgh Pod Driver Podcast Day. Alec Ransom, Beef the Legend, Tiger, nope, he's out. Uh, Poot the Bard, it's the three amigos at it. The Tiger Bomb's off doing some gaming things, hanging out with his other camcorders, mounted up on his tripod, because that's the world that he lives in. Whoops, there's two dick references. Straddle in, everybody. We're going to have a dick count. And if you get the answer to the question at the end of the episode, how many dick references were there, guess what you're going to win? Nothing. Absolute dick squad. Start show. Let's go. What are we talking about? Do we have wrestling things that have happened? Uh, well, we had Fight for the Fallen that happened, yeah, that happened. or Fighter Fest 2, Electric Boogaloo, as uh, Jim, uh, Jim Ross even would like to fucking say. Now, I didn't watch NXT, but I did watch uh, AEW. And that seems to be the consensus with the most of the population that people were watching well, AEW and not NXT. Well, and, and the, the, the numbers ratings. the numbers reflect that because I think what was it AEW had seven hundred thirty five thousand and uh, uh, like seven eighty I think or yeah so seven eighty and NXT had somewhere in the six hundreds. Oh yeah. Well, and so, it's, it's 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 a flip flop. NXT had one, had had one for three weeks in a row. Um, you know, the old fucking Mick Foley trick, like, you know, you leak this, you, you leak the spoiler of Keith Lee winning and you're going to get fucking numbers up because people are like, oh shit, it's a title change on free TV. Let's fucking watch. They knew um, what they were doing. They sure fucking did. They did it on purpose. Um, they knew. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They but, uh, knew. no, I mean, you know, good, good shows last night. Uh, good shows the last three weeks, really. Um... It's been uh, it's been a hell of a time. It's it's gonna, it's gonna feel weird next week whenever there's like no real stakes on the line on AEW or NXT. But you know, uh, westward the wagons, as it were. Well, when's uh, when's Teresa Blanchard debuting on something? Isn't she showing up somewhere? Um, there's talk about her showing up in WWE for Evolution, but that oh, you know, that's what it was, Evolution. Knows? Who the fuck knows when that's going to happen? Allegedly, uh, that's penned in or penciled in for SummerSlam weekend. Um, I guess they're going to do NXT Evolu- Evolution and then SummerSlam. Who fucking knows? I don't. You know, it's it's all the same fucking bullshit. Um, oh, hey, oh. we're doing picks tonight. I forgot about that. Um, but it's the same. You know, speaking of bullshit, it's all it's all so fucking run together. You know, like there's just no. With it being from the from the performance center, like I thought that before before the, the COVID happened, I really thought that Raw and SmackDown were like run together y as it were. Like that they the, the shows all felt the same. But now, oh my goodness. It's just it you, worse? you Oh, it's just it it it's just the same shit every week. Unless, like, on SmackDown, you work in a stupid fucking karaoke angle that fucking takes up half yeah, your fucking what, show. What was the fucking, like, what was the deal with that? Because, like, I, I, I didn't watch SmackDown. Li- literally. Okay, so if anyone out there is listening and you're going, well, this is a wrestling podcast. Why the fuck are they not watching wrestling? It's because, number one, we're, we're busy fucking people. And number two, um, Some of us. I know that... Uh, <laughs> I know that is this just this how is this is is this just how it's going to be like the rest of forever? You're just gonna like self deprecate yourself and un- undermine yes. yourself the entire time. Ransom, yeah. welcome yeah. Ransom, welcome to the club. It's not that bad and you get a lot of laughs. The um uh oh. my point is like I I know that Raw and SmackDown are just gonna be the shits. I'm sorry I'm being mm-hmm. negative, but like they're gonna be the shits and they're gonna be boring. Sure, there might be little sparks of good things. But like, fuck, man. You know, I I, I don't want to waste two, three hours of my time watching something that's mediocre because they don't know what to do with their hands. 
No. It's my um, mind. I mean, of the penis. Oh, that's oh okay. Count it. So, I mean. Dickheads. Oh, I oh, think. I think that we had. Like, the whole fucking three hour raw thing was wearing real fucking thing. Re- real fucking thing again before COVID. Now, you know. It's still three hours, right? It is. Oh, God, is it fucking three wow, hours? That's I haven't. Unfortunate. You know, I haven't. I don't know, man. I I feel like I really can't say too much about it because I don't really watch Raw or SmackDown anymore because they are awful. Hmm. But like I, I I hear the last couple of weeks, of, well prior to last week SmackDown was really solid. Like they had the the Intercontinental Title Tournament, which was all amazing. Um, I guess the Riddle AJ Styles match was really great. Like. And they've really put some time into SmackDown, which is why it fucking befuddles me that they do all this stupid bullshit. I, you know, it, 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 it just seems like Bruce Pritchard has no idea what he's doing <laughs> from, from, from week to week. And again, I don't think it's Bruce. I think it's the other guy that has the fucking uh, problem deciding what it's going to be from week to week. I don't know why. What position is that? The Paul Heyman got ousted from that now Pritchard's in charge of on both shows. What position is uh, that? I believe that is officially the Vince McMahon hold my balls position. Well, no, but I mean, like, for real, though. Like, what position is that called? Uh, lead booker. It's not what they call it, but that's essentially what it is. You're like the fucking writer or the guy that. Lead you're... booker! Oh. What? So oh, here's the what? thing. Lead Booker, like King Booker, Lead Booker. Uh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Come on, on board. you have to explain it, it's not funny. Uh, I don't, why, why? Why do they even have that position? Couldn't you save a shit ton of money if you didn't have somebody in that position? In all honesty, though, like, you know, while we're on the, while we're on the, the, the kick of eliminating positions here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, um, no. Uh, like, why, though? I'm sad Because now. if it's just going to be Vince... If it's just going to be Vince going, stupid, no, I want to do it this way, we're going to do that. No, we're not going to do this, we're going to do that instead. Just write the shows, Vince. Just do it but, yourself. Why but, are you having somebody in there the, to try to do something, and then you just shit all over it and change it? I honestly believe it's because if we didn't have, um, if, if we didn't have someone there to be even the slightest fucking bit of a filter, then... It would be absolute abject chaos. Like it would. Vince would have what? everything like, be a dick but and fart not the filter, joke. Though. He's the filter. At this point, like, is abject chaos really a negative thing? Like, it's so basic and just so like A plus B equals C. For example. The Latinos are all together. A plus Selena B. Selena Vega. A plus uh, B. Angel Garza. A and plus B. Andrade. A plus B equals C is objectively the opposite of chaos. <laughs> but that, but that's what I'm saying. Like right now, that's what it is. All the, all the, uh, the black guys are feuding. You know, you have MVP and, and Bobby Lashley feuding with Apollo Cruz. So like it's 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 like everybody's kind of like cordoned off into their own corners. Uh, I don't want to call Vince McMahon racist, but we know that he is. Um, I, 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 I just feel like well. if, if, if he got crazy with it and like just fucking threw shit at the wall, why not? You know, what harm is it going to do? I mean, especially now that you're down Reigns, that you're down, you know, Kevin Owens here and there, that Sami Zayn's not around. Like, uh, you know, you're... Lesnar, Rousey, like all these people, Charlotte are gone. Like right now, they're they're hurting for talent. Why not put that shit on spin cycle and see what comes out the other side? Well, I, I, because, dude, you're you're saying like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. On one hand, maybe you're right. I I will I will give you this. Maybe you're right. Let's see what happens. But on the other hand, on the other side of things, dude, legit. Stop and think about worst case scenario. Think if you if you gave an unfiltered, unfettered Vince McMahon the reins to do whatever he wants when he wants it, 
th- th- st- legit stop and think about that. Oh, you mean like having somebody's eye ripped out of their head? Something like that? Well, that Whoa, I, I honestly, dude. I don't know if that was an original Vince McMahon idea. I think that was something People someone said. off of roofs? Like, hey, let's throw this guy off a roof. Whoa. Yeah, you know, rip. Uh, like, yeah, by the way, because since I haven't really watched, what's the deal? What's going on with Aleister Black right now? Speaking um, of a hard, toiling, hard left turn here. Yeah, yeah sorry. I'm toiling t- in mid... Totally a mid card obscurity. Uh, Welcome to the main working, roster from NXT. Another NXT guy who was on the top. Working with Owens sometimes. So, like, the whole roster, pretty much, except for, like, the main event scene and the tag team scene on Raw, is kind of, like, embroiled in this whole Mysterio versus Seth thing. Like, they've had the Andrade-Angel Garza connection kind of play into it a little bit. Um, you know, they, they, they've had Kevin Owens play into it a little bit. Um, you know, uh, Black has been there. So, I mean, like, people are, like, dabbling here and there. Uh, to answer your question, uh, Al- this week on Raw, Aleister Black faced Buddy Murphy. Show me your shocked face. Um, but... Uh, you know that's 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 the problem with Raw is that it has no real draw, no real drama, no real anything, man. Like there's, I mean, I I love McIntyre, but you know, right now is not a good time for him to be champion. Um, there's just other other than the ridiculous shit that goes on between the Viking Raiders, who are constantly eating shit sandwiches. And um, the uh, the street profits. Other than that ridiculous shit, like there's not a lot of substance on Raw right now. Well, that's disappointing. Well, so you think, and also not surprising. You think that adding in a little bit of abject chaos would make everything better? You think? No, no. I think that completely putting the shit in a blender and going fucking loony with it has the potential to make it better. Yeah. That's throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks with extra steps. Let's now, say- let's hold on. I just want to say one thing here real quick. Mm-hmm. If you look at some of the things they've done, though, over the past five, even ten years... I would say a lot of that can be classified as throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Because there have been some, like, look at how many times titles have been hot potatoed. Mm-hmm. For no real reason. Yeah. For no real reason. Just Remember because. the AJ Styles United States run where he lost it to Ricochet, who lost it to... No. Joe had it. I don't remember anymore, but like there, there, exactly. there was a period of time when it went from like Ray to Joe to like Ricochet to Andrade to Styles to uh, yeah. I don't even know how it got to Apollo Crews. Like it's, it's all potatoed everywhere, so it's almost like all right. Well, let's see who we want to put the title on this week, and then yep. in two weeks, oh, let's see who we want to put the title on this week. So I would say that there, it seems like there has been some of that that attitude of well, let's just you know. Let's toss the cocaine up in the air and see whose nose it goes into. <laughs> like, honestly, I feel like that's sometimes like what happens. Bruce, Vince, uh, Triple H is straight and air, so he doesn't do that. You know, well, Bruce, Vince, who the hell knows? Uh, I mean, what's got that the, guy? Got, got the nose for it. Well, who's, who's the guy who uh, was the Intercontinental Champion and they always made fun of him for being gay? He's single, Pat fellas. Patterson. Yeah, <laughs> Patterson. Toss Briscoe in there. Who gives a shit? Fucking throw a cocaine up in the air and see whose nose gets the biggest whiff of it. And let's roll with that idea this week. Let's put a title on this guy. It's true. That's, I mean, so I think at the end of the day, though, it, it, it all, it all kind of goes back to the Cena sized hole that's been left. Um, and, and, and the lack of them filling it. Like, ever since John Cena left, it has been worse and worse. And worse, and by no means am I saying that the C- that, C- that uh, Cena was the savior, that he was the best thing that ever happened to Raw. But it didn't you know, seem like you had this kind of insanity whenever he was around, though. 
right in. I mean, there was Vancouver. a little bit, but not as much. And like, I still watched. <laughs> a lot of people still watch. He was an entertaining fella. Sure. If, if not, uh, we're, so we're going to sit here. Else, we're going to sit here and do what every other outlet is doing and praise Cena in retrospect. That's what we're so going to do. This this Listen. is how this is how crazy and how bad it's gotten is that we've come full circle, wishing that we could go back to the days of, days of John Cena, because shit started, seemed to make sense at that point. I started appreciating Cena about two years before his like before him leaving. I was I like, I started appreciating fuck. Cena before appreciating Cena was cool. Like I, I I was like, fuck, you know, this guy is about there busting his ass, being very entertaining, and I, and I get it. That people didn't like him, but it's not didn't like him. They didn't like the fact that he was like the guy for so long, when they didn't want him to be the guy. Like I and understand look, that and we we've talked about about it before as well. They tried to replicate. I. It's gonna sound like I'm shitting on Roman Reigns. Uh, sorry if it sounds like that way. Oh well, get over it. But it it seems like they tried to replicate that with Roman Reigns. Cena left, mm-hmm. and they're like, shoot, we need a new Cena. Oh. You know what? Instead of being a white-faced baby meat, it'll be a, a dark meat Samoan guy. Boom. Roman Reigns. He's going to be the new WWE superhero. I mean, come on. Think about it. John Cena was a superhero. He left. And what do we got? We got Roman Reigns with the Superman punch. Like, he's the new superhero. And yep. they tried to duplicate John Cena with Roman Reigns. And that's why Roman Reigns' push from the start was immediately shot upon by fans. Yep. Because when they looked at it, they went, oh, here's something new. Oh, wait, it's not actually new. It's John Cena 2.0 because they're doing exactly with Roman Reigns what they did with John Cena. Instead of letting Roman Reigns be Roman Reigns, nope. Push him to the moon no matter what. It's exactly the same, isn't it, Steve? Isn't it, Steve? It's not different at all, is it, Steve? I, I, you know, when you have a superstar leave you have to be able to put the crown on somebody else pretty much immediately and and that's why grooming people is so important like you look at what AEW is doing right now with Orange Cassidy Private Party Sammy Guevara Darby Allen uh, oh my god Allen he so if you if you look at their combined records here as of late Jungle Boy MJF with the exception of MJF, they're all kind of like, you know, 50% booking. And you're like, well, you know, h- how is that benefiting these young guys? Well, in like five years, that roster that I just named is going to be like on top of the company. And it's going to be blowing WWE. And I'm talking everything WWE, including NXT, out of the fucking water. Yeah, because well, I mean... I, these guys, I agree. I can see it. Name, name. Th- there is no young talent on NXT, and and I love NXT, but guys I, like Cross, Cole, uh, Lee, Dijakovic, you know, Strong. They're all like mid thirties. They're all journeymen who have gotten to the point of the culmination you know, of WWE now. Adam Cole's not in his mid thirties. Oh, I beg the differ, sir. Is Adam Cole? Well, even Keith Lee, really? Yep. No shit, huh? Yep. Well then, Adam Cole is thirty-one, so he's not quite mid thirties yet, but he is—he's he's getting he's, there. He's, he's approaching there. Um, you know, Keith Lee is thirty-five. Uh, thirty-five. So I mean, like I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like these guys are journeymen. Who have been out there, and yes, like I'm so glad that they're in NXT that they get to exhibit their talents and that they are making awesome things happen. But this is not long term longevity. This is Triple H saying, "Hey, let's give the indie guys what they want." Now, and which which was working fine for like four or five years, but now that there's an alternative that all these young guys can go, well, you know what? I could go to the Performance Center, or I could go to AEW. No, because yeah, before AEW, there choice. was nowhere to go. Precisely, except for like maybe Japan to go cut your teeth in Japan. So now, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think AEW is set up for a long, long time 
Um, and, 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 and if they can get through the, the, the opening bid, which uh, according to Cody, by the way, I read, they're already making a profit. They have not been in the business for a year, and they're turning a profit already. Oh, that's pretty that's freaking good. fucking huge. Yeah, especially in that's economic astronomical. climate. Freaking yeah. Absolutely. That's a- yeah, right, Poot. That, that's astronomical that in, in the fucking COVID that they're turning a profit. Well, and I, no, I honestly I mean, think it's because they're leaning... First of all, they have a lot of savvy businessmen at the helm. Second of mm-hmm. all, the, it's merchandise, man. I'm going to tell you something. Yep. I I own quite a bit of WWE merchandise as far as like t-shirts go. Uh, I I'm sitting here staring at my The Fiend Bray Wyatt pop vinyl. Like there no. there are um oh it's actually really cool. Um I got to get one of those. No, they're yeah, great. he was. He was um, really cool. No, nah, well, shut your whore <laughs> mouth. Anyway, the um I, I own a lot of their t-shirts, and some of them are great, but the problem is some of them are great. When you look at AEW's merch, legit, even the ones that I kind of go, eh, I wouldn't wear it, but someone will, like, it, it, like all their merch is perfect mm-hmm. in every way. Yep. yep. And that's how they're making comfy, their money. And wearable. Yeah, man. Like, that's that's the thing. And I mean, you know, the fact that they have sixty dollars pay per views does does doesn't hurt for sure. Not everybody does that. Not everybody subscribes to that. A lot of people will, you know, pirate it. Whatever, that's fine. But the thing is, um, that there are still people though that are willing to shell out sixty dollars to watch mm-hmm. a pay per view, a hundred percent. And it's clear that they're making yep. money off of it. But that's that's a that that's a complete discourse that I, I didn't mean to bring up. My point here is that AEW is set up to succeed for the future, which it seems like they're poised to have a future in. WWE, ever so when when The Rock and Stone Cold left, they had to make a lot of difficult choices. They put the crown on Brock Lesnar. They said, you're going to be our dude, with good reason. The dude is a fucking animal, he's a hard worker, and he's a genetic freak. But then he, but 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 then he spurned them. He said, "You know what? Nope, I'm gonna go play football. I'm gonna go, you know, go to UFC." Um, he Brock Lesnar doesn't need wrestling. Wrestling needs Brock Lesnar. That's so they they, they put their eggs in that basket, and it uh, was upturned. Then they fell into Cena and Batista, and Orton, who took a while to come around, but finally. Uh, you know, at, at at the end of their uh, uh, respective careers, we're kind of appreciating them a little bit more. The stuff that Batista did as a heel, Cena's work influence, and just Orton in general. Like we're we're appreciating what they are now. It was tough to do that in the moment, but I mean, even like so, like obviously they were not mega stars because mega stars are like one in a million. You know, they. To me, they had that in CM Punk, and they blew it. They had it in Daniel Bryan, and a combination of them and injuries blew it. Like, so, th- after those three, Batista, Orton, and, and Cena, did their business, and now they're off, you know, well, Cena and Batista are out making real money and saying, why would I, you know, put my body through this fucking 299 nights in a year whenever I could go make bank for working fucking 30 days hard they were not set up for that to lose those guys and that's on them they spent way too much time making those three and not enough time investing in their future and now they're oh, paying yeah. for it yep I, I think if you if you hearken back to and this isn't another you know boner for oh stick reference found it yep. uh no it's not a boner for the um attitude era but like if you look back at wwe in the past and it's it's not even all that distant of a past, really. I mean, if you know, if you quantify how long WWE has been around, if you look at what they did with Bret Hart, like they built him up. He started as a mid carder. He was the Intercontinental Champion. They built him up, built him up. He had wins. He had losses. Well, he started in the tag team there with uh, Neidhart. Sure, sure. sure. But like they built him up, and then the guy came along behind him, Shawn Michaels. Built him up. He had wins and losses. He was was completely different than Bret Hart. They didn't try to create another Bret Hart. They did something completely different with Shawn Michaels. Brought him up. And he took over the reins from Bret Hart. 
And then behind him was Stone Cold, another guy who started out as a tag team guy. Like he had, he was a tag team champion. Uh, he was Intercontinental champion, but they developed him. He was a mid card guy. Brought him up. He was a top card guy. You know, one of the freaking biggest ever. He was no Shawn Michaels. He was no Bret Hart. He was his own unique so, entity. Right behind him was The Rock. So they didn't try to duplicate the success they had before. They cultivated new guys in order to put that success onto them. And so, it seems like they lost their way in that because what what they did with Cena, followed by Roman Reigns, they almost it's like they tried to give the audience another John Cena when they should have just given the audience Roman Reigns. Let him be his own is, thing. So are we, wait, 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 wait. So are we saying Got that it. right now the current problem with WWE is the lack of consistent longer-term booking? <gasps> right. You mean something so, we've been talking about for, oh, what, uh, fuck all years? Yeah, man. Uh, so... Here's the problem in eight, I think, in all this is the internet, and 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 people's fucking um, attention spans being gone in a moment. Smartphones, fucking, you name it, man. Like people, old and, man and, and beef WWE's, added again. No man. <laughs> no man. No man. Yeah, uh, man. No, I agree WWE's with you. Honestly, I agree. Inconsistency to how they want to handle that. Sometimes it's like they want to succumb to that pressure and make the changes that the internet wants. Sometimes it's like, fuck the internet, we're going to do our own thing. And I'm talking like that changes on a month-to-month basis. Roman Reigns is a perfect example. And 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 I've been saying this for a year now. If they would have just hammered the pedal down on Roman Reigns and said, fuck you people, here's what you're getting. I think that we would have a bona fide superstar. But the fact that they are so hot and cold because of how the crowd treats him, because of how they booked him initially, has done him no favors. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, they were so invested in Orton and Cena and Batista that they didn't bother thinking about how they were going to replace them. And I don't think that they planned on Cena and Batista piecing out as early as they did. Here's the thing I don't understand about, about the Roman Reigns comparison with John Cena is that the internet was around when, when John Cena had his heyday. When he was the superhero, the face of the WWE, there was still internet. There was still smartphones. Like, it was all still here. Nothing really changed technology-wise between the age of Cena and the age of Roman Reigns. So why did they do what they did with Cena, the continued push, the constantly ignoring of, of the internet? Who gives a shit what the fans want? We're going to do with Cena what we want. Why the flip flop then to Roman Reigns? Well, if you look you know at the I mean? timeline, like man, when when Cena started getting over, he's... it was around fuck WrestleMania twenty was his first big moment, um, and yep. that would have been he won the US title against uh, so big show, big show, yeah, oh uh, four. So like smartphones weren't really pre- prevalent; they were out there, but they weren't really prevalent. And and even whenever they first started coming out, they were. Very fucking slow, um, right? But I, I, I don't think my, I don't think the invention my, of cell phones though did it because there was still no. You could no, still go to any wrestling website. You could go to WrestleZone and see all that shit. That was all still around, but you had to do yeah, it from but a it computer. Was still, it was still fairly marky at that point. It wasn't like it was. It, it wasn't super deep cut. Like, hey, this is what's really happening. Like, it was still. Mm framed in the idea that like oh people don't know what the business is all about y- y- you get what i'm saying well and well, i, think I mean that, look, dave melter has been around for decades right it's 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 not the internet I- i'm not blaming the internet I- I'm, I'm blaming people's attention spans because the smartphones mm. have gotten faster attention spans have fucking dwindled like people don't watch okay. commercials anymore they can buy hulu without commercials so they can sit there and watch our show without fucking commercials. They buy shit without ads. Like, attention spans are gone. If So if you look at the timeline, when, when Cena was successful early on, like, I, I, f- I feel like the attention spans were there. But as the attention spans started to wane, so did the appease for John Cena being there. And it didn't help that for, like, two years straight we got Cena versus Orton in some fucking capacity. 
Maybe oh. Triple H thrown in. Maybe the Big Show thrown in. A Shawn Michaels match here and there. But it was Orton and fucking Cena pretty constant. Like, that was a rough kind of stretch. That didn't help, for sure. But, like, now, looking back on it, it's like, fuck, I'd kill to have a Cena or an Orton on the roster full-time. And it's, and it's shitty, because when we got a guy like Bray Wyatt, who is a fucking creative gem, guys like Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, who can wrestle circles around pretty much anybody else in the world, save Kenny Omega, like, you have the talent there to really make something special. Not to mention, you have the best women's division in the world, in WWE, and I'm including NXT in that, uh, by far. And, and I love AEW's women division. They got a long way to go. Like, women wrestling has never been as good as it is now. And with all of that said, it's still floundering. Week in Look, I, and week out. I think you, you brought up a good point here. And I, I think I think that culminates for me in my, in my dislike of the John Cena, Bray Wyatt, Firefly Funhouse match. Is exactly what you said at the beginning of that last that last statement there beef was that you know you 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 want to see something like john cena versus like a bray wyatt i i think my problem with it was i wanted to see that match i i i understand the creativity and the bizarreness and the show factor behind that firefly funhouse match i understand that but i think uh, oh pardon me i think my dislike or my disappointment, rather, for what that match was, is that I wanted to see, I wanted to see the John Cena that would come out, salute, come down to the ring, and go. Five moves of doom aside, I don't care about that anymore. I wanted to see John Cena throw down with Bray Wyatt. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, Swamp Wizard, whoever, hell, Husky Harris, whatever the fuck he's going to be. <laughs> Like I, I, that's, I think that's what I wanted. And then when I didn't get that, when I got nope. that, that show of the Firefly Funhouse match, I was so disappointed that I, I, I wrote it off immediately. Because when I started to see all the, you know, the hokiness, like, okay, they're not actually going to wrestle. I didn't, I didn't have the open mind for what they wanted fans to have in that match like i wanted to see those two i wanted to see the fiend and john cena throw down because like you said beef i think that could have like i think if john cena were to wrestle the fiend i think that would be a phenomenal match and i think they could do great storytelling in the ring in a traditional match and when it when it didn't happen i think that's when i wrote that match off because i thought just for a second okay john cena's gonna come back not come back forever i knew that wasn't gonna happen but, like, we're going to see a John Cena match. Yeah, I, I can I, hear. I, I really, and, and, you know, I got to give you all the credit in the world, Ransom, for, um, for being willing to say the reason why you were, you know, objectively disappointed or whatever, what have you about it is because you were expecting it it, it kind of makes me feel good that you were expecting a certain quality out of John Cena. I was. You know I what was. I mean? And and, and not and even I, just I, I, John Cena you, but dude, Bray Wyatt as well. Yes. And I'm telling you if if that match would have been advertised I don't know really how they really could have done it without spoiling it. You know what I mean? But like Right. If I knew it was going to be like a cinematic thing where it really wasn't wrestling, it was something completely different i would have gone into it expecting that and open-minded to that and i probably would have looked at it and went all right that's really creative a lot of these things are real funny and i see what he's doing i see the psychological thing that the fiend's doing with john cena like i get it but there was I, there was honestly there was zero percent of me that went into that match thinking it was going to be anything different than like a wrestling match. I thought there might have been some gimmicks, like John Cena might have gotten attacked by a few puppets, uh, or Bray Wyatt would have, you know, came out of like a, a box, or mid-match he would have gone under the ring as the Fiend to come out in the sweater vest, and then someone else comes out as the Fiend. There would have been some hokey stuff, fine. But I thought it was going to be a, like a wrestling match, 
And when it wasn't, I wrote it off in my mind because it was a complete 180 on what I was expecting. And when you look at it that way, it's 100% my problem the way I took that match. It had nothing to do with Bray Wyatt. It had nothing to do with John Cena or the way that match came off. It was 100% my own expectation letting, my, letting me down is what that was. Yeah, and I think it's important to, to, to note that that could well be the last we see of John Cena in the ring. It, it may not be, but but it could well be. Um, so, I mean, to see... I think that's a disservice to him. One of the greatest as, as of all you, time. Yes. I as will, much as we I, complained I, about him, mm-hmm. come on, you can't give him a better send-off than that. Right. And here's something that really fucking ticks me off, too. So, <clears throat> assuming that that is John Cena's last match. And assuming that the Boneyard match is Undertaker's last match, which is, is what he's basically saying. Like, Cena put over the young guy, well, quote-unquote young guy, the, the hot hand. All right, Which is great. Taker literally buried the hot hand. So, like, that's, so that's a big fucking problem that I have. And no. I haven't fucking said word one about no, it. No, 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 no. I'm gonna I, look. I I know you want to say Rob your piece, and I'm gonna let you, but I'm gonna preface this already to see if I can change any of your opinions. Go just ahead. just hear me out. Let's do it. Steve the Dave. difference between Cena and the Undertaker. Yeah, Cena's a legend. He's a Hall of Fame superstar. He sold a lot of merch, and he was a rock star. And we're sitting here lauding his work and his ability to storytell. However, to compare Cena and the Undertaker is comparing apples and oranges. Okay, I'm not even going to do one of my wild things where it's apples and VW bugs. Like, it's apples and oranges, okay? They're both fruits, but they're completely different things, okay? Uh Like, to say that I feel like Cena, if it was his last match, to do something like that, I think behooves Cena more. I feel like The Undertaker, it, it, it behooves his legacy and his the the mysticism of him and also the yeah. fact that he wanted to work with AJ Styles Styles wanted this match as well they did something very unique and adapted to the times that they were in they both seemed very happy with it we're all kind of happy with it and and, oh, it great. and 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 here's the point and and here's the point with it is that Styles has said he's He's done. It's not like when his contract is up with WWE that he's going to go back to New Japan or go to AEW or do any of those things. He might be in a Tully Blanchard scenario. He might come back and like be the mouthpiece for someone, which I think he would be incredible for. And that's a whole different can of worms. But actually being in the ring, Styles has said, and he's gone on record, and he's a man of conviction. That his time in WWE is going to be where he's done wrestling. He's happy with his career. He's happy with his legacy. And frankly, I think as far as it comes to The Undertaker, to have him lose in that match did not hurt anybody. It gave Taker the out he needed to ride into the sunset, which I think fits him as a person I think it fits him as a character and I think of any wrestler in history that could go out on top winning it would be Mark Calloway the Undertaker Styles is not hurting from this it's not like we all went oh Styles is buried nobody said that shit we all were like holy fuck Taker wanted to go out working with one of the best workers, if not the best worker in the world. So before you knee jerk and say he killed the hot hand and he didn't want to do business and he didn't want to do any of those things. Think about what you're saying, because it's the undertaker like it's different. He is different. He has been different his whole career and his legacy will always be different. So again, postulate on that and think upon that and ruminate on that before you make any declarative statements fucking cowboy i think it's bullshit oh i i loved the boneyard match i thought it was wonderful and i thought the perfect undertaker thing i'm like oh fuck 
they could keep churning these out for the next five years. And you know what? Like, if Undertaker comes back and goes out on his back, I will retract this rant. But, oh. like, Undertaker is, like, the fucking old-school consulate. Like, he's the guy that would walk around the backstage and be like, boy, why aren't you wearing a suit? Like, he's the guy that would go back there and be like, boy, don't you fucking, like, you know, break kayfabe out there. He's the guy. He was the old-school locker room leader. The guy, the, 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 the veteran who everybody fucking reverenced, with good reason. I'm taking nothing away from the Undertaker's legacy. I think that he had a phenomenal career. One of the greatest of all time. I think that Cena's career was better. Fight me. Um, wow. I think, I think that John Cena did more for the you business. Need, listen, you Fight need me. to slow your roll. No, nope, nope, I'm still you going. You need to slow your going. fucking roll for a second. I'm still going. So, The Undertaker, I respect the hell out of him. Because he is super old, and he still got up for a match. Oh. And he's been getting up for the matches the last five years, when he had no fucking business to do so. But, oh, pardon me. it is fucking written law. Like, whenever fucking Vern Gagne held up the stones to Freddy Blassi, and Freddy Blassi said from the heavens, thou shalt put over the good guys at WrestleMania. Thou shalt use dusty finishes to continue feuds. Thou shalt go out on your back. Like, that is a fucking Ten Commandment of wrestling. Sound a real cornetish right now. Thank you. Motherfucker, you... Don't point that out. It's not me for once. Put the talent over. You give back to the industry that you have reaped from. And for The Undertaker, we're talking, what, 30 years? That's a stellar career. And I understand that him quote-unquote, going out on his back was at WrestleMania 30. I, I understand that, and that's whenever the real fucking put-over happened. I understand that 100%. And then, you know, again, at WrestleMania 33, but nobody remembers that. Oh. Um, like, I, I, I get every piece of that. However, the last match of your career, you lose. And you put over somebody who's going to take the game to the next level. Shawn oh, Michaels oh, did it. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Ric Flair needed to put over that young buck, Shawn Michaels. You're absolutely right. Like, totally, Beef, I get your point. Never mind. I recant everything I fucking said. Well, look, hold on. If you're going to go down that line, Poot, did Shawn Stone Michaels Cold, still had. Hold on. Did had... Stone Cold need to put over The Rock at the WrestleMania where it was. Stone Cold's last last match. Did he need to put over The Rock? No, right. The Rock wasn't a young buck at that point. The Rock was a good lord. A, no, but big that was a lot bigger more, than Stone Cold at the time. That was a lot more tumultuous, and there was a lot more like negative feelings that were around at that point. Stone Cold took his ball and went home. Let's not no, forget. No, that was Listen, long after. No, that, that was, was after that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The Stone Cold so, The Rock thing was the last match that Stone Cold had in the ring, and he put The Rock over clean at WrestleMania, which. At that point, The Rock was the Hollywood heel. Yep. I mean, that was the start of the Hollywood heel rock. And very shortly after the Hollywood heel rock debuted, The Rock was legit gone but, to Hollywood. But the thing is, what does AJ Styles have to... AJ Styles already oh, has a rock star of a career. On! My God. Well, I mean, along yeah, the same I, token, I, I fucking sat here Brock Lesnar had nothing to prove against... Brain on. Brock Lesnar had nothing to prove when he beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Nothing. Right. Like, he was not a young buck at the time, either. He was already on Brock Lesnar part-time uh, yep. contract. So there was so, no, you know, putting over a young guy there. Rick he Flair. He put over another old guy. So, to compare Ric Flair and Undertaker is apples and oranges. I'm going to use your own fucking analogy against you, you savvy bastard. Oh. Um, so, Ric Flair is... And a lot of people's, like Mount Rushmore, they'll, they'll say number one, like, with a fucking bullet. He had, I think, the chutzpah and the fucking, like, cred to be able to say, I want this guy to put me, to, to put me out. Plus, Shawn Michaels still had another good couple of years in him where he then put over the top guy. So, yeah, it's still a fucking passing of the torch moment. But I digress. Yeah. 
at the end of the day, if you... Your last match, you need to be doing something for the good of the business. And assuming that we've seen The Undertaker's last match... Nope. I think it was a selfish move. All right. Now... I, here's here here's 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 the epilogue. In the last ride, Taker did say that if it's up to him, he's not gonna you know do it, but he's gonna keep the fucking cape and the gloves and the hat in a you know break in case of emergency. He's leaving this in Vince McMahon's hands. We know how fucking oh like Vince McMahon is more knee jerky than I am. And so, with Raw ratings being in the toilet, we may see the fucking Undertaker, Undertaker for SummerSlam, for all we know. But, um, you know, to, to well, say that Vince... Well, unless you're not just, showing up, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, right? But but to say that Vince would just not have him come out again, I think is is, is ridiculous and probably would not happen. But if, if we have seen the last match of The Undertaker, while not a traditional match, no, he still walked away victoriously when he had the option of letting the other guy build his legacy by being the one to put down the Undertaker. All right. Whose call do you think that was? Like at the end of the day, do you think that was the Undertaker saying, I want to win that match? Or do you think those two said, Hey, we want to have a match together at WrestleMania. And Vince was like, all right, we're going to put this match together. Undertaker's going to go over. You want to know why I think Undertaker went over? I think it was because... Think about Taker's matches. Okay, yeah, he had his Brock Lesnar, you know, losing the streak thing, and then he lost to Roman Reigns in that shitstorm of a match. But I'm also including that in this. So think about the matches Taker had from Roman Reigns up until the AJ Styles match. Think about those matches. Think about them right now. Were any of them good? No. Oh, no. No, No. they were. They were garbo. They were objectively hot, steaming fire piles of garbage. And I think it was a combination of Taker wanting to prove that he could go out on a good note. So, yeah, did he probably have a say in it? Sure, but I honestly believe the professionalism of Mark Calloway, he included AJ Styles in this, and Styles understands the legacy and the importance of what was happening and the type of match and the type of situation they were in, and he agreed to it because Styles knows that losing to The Undertaker in a Boneyard match is not going to fucking hurt his career. It Even though he was quite literally buried, it was not going to bury him in the least. And Styles took him to the limit. Like, that's the thing is you're you're like, I understand your perspective beef. And part of me goes like, yeah, okay, I totally get it. And I agree with you. But really, you're, you're being a little too staunch about this, man. Like, yeah, the tradition is go out on your back. But like, man, come on! It, it like it's it's a. It, I'm sorry, it's different. I'm not one for making ex- exceptions. I'm not one for doing those sort of things. But like, man, come on! It 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 made sense. If Styles would have won that match, like even thinking back to it, sure, I would have popped at the time. But then thinking about it after the fact, after the afterglow was over, I totally would have been like. That feels weird. That feels really weird. I, oh, that's awkward. I say yeah, that, I mean, it would have sent Styles on on this thing of saying, I beat The Undertaker in his last match ever. But then you would have to make these big declarative statements about it was The Undertaker's last match. It was on his home turf. It was on this. It was on that. You would have to stand by the statement of keeping Mark Calloway out of programming. Well, I mean... I think a lot of people felt that way when Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker. And then The Undertaker came back. So Brock Lesnar beats him at WrestleMania, and then they did exactly what you said. How long was it 
that the promos were the one in 20. Like, that was the Brock Lesnar promo. He was the one in 20, whatever, and whatever. Like that. A year. So that was the thing. So I think a lot of fans felt that because it was like, okay, Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. So everybody was expecting that was it. Brock Lesnar beat him. And I would say that he beat him on his home turf a lot more than the Boneyard match is, is his home turf. Because The Undertaker ran rush shot over every match in WrestleMania he was ever in and won every single time. So that's the, the WrestleMania is more the Undertaker match than the Boneyard match is. So Brock Lesnar beats him at, under, at, at WrestleMania, and then the Undertaker shows up again. And then you get a few years later, Roman Reigns beats him at WrestleMania. He leaves his stuff on the ground, and people are thinking, oh, okay, that's, this is it. Now this is it. And, and then he, he, comes, he comes back again. So, I don't know. Like, I, I see the point you're making in your argument, but I feel like they did. I feel like WWE has done your argument a disservice by having him lose once at WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar after the streak, and then again to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania after the streak. He leaves all of his stuff in the ring, symbolizing that he's done, and then he's back again. It adds a, it adds a microcosm story of redemption. Hmm. Now and oh, I understand clearly, that's, I mean, that's, I that's, that's the Undertaker the needs that microcosm. Well, but yeah, like, clearly, I watched the last. I ride just too, don't but... understand <laughs> beef. I just don't understand your 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 saltiness over this. Like because literally, Undertaker the entire has always... the entire wrestling world is not salty about this except for you. Because the Undertaker, time and time again, has been the old guard. He's been the guy, you know, the old vet who does things the old way and old school and this, that, and the other thing. The fucking oldest school thing in the world is going out on your back he in your did, last match. And and you have made Ransom made the argument and you have not opposed his argument that he did that twice. On an uh, 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 no, 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 no. on he did that on at WrestleMania twenty uh, uh, at WrestleMania yeah. when he lost to Brock Lesnar, and then he did that when he lost to WrestleMania uh, to Roman Reigns and left his shit in the ring. Like this is is yeah, Undertaker's been the old guard, and this is how you do things and everything like that. But think about his character. Think about this. His character back in the day broke the mold. It did. He was it, that character was set up for absolute failure. Think about back then. The Undertaker. Okay. Yeah, he's big and scary and everything. But he he broke the mold. Even with his character, as it evolved over time, he broke the mold. He made it more dark and evil. Then he turned it into a biker character. Then he turned it into to Booger Red, as Jim Ross liked to throw out that colloquialism. Oh, but like, but then he brought it back around where it was this hybrid of both. And then coming out, it didn't, f you know. And even here's the other <sighs> thing: oh, it me. didn't feel like. The Undertaker coming into that Styles match, it felt like, all right, this is Mark Calloway saying goodbye. Like, it Ooh. felt a little more visceral. It felt a little more different. So the entire career of The Undertaker, he has reinvented and changed things. So, yeah, maybe that's a loose argument to you. But, like, th really, think about how he's constantly evolved and changed. Does that make like does that make it right that he didn't go out on his back on his last match? No, B like in your opinion, but I think it it's very fitting of any talent in history. I think it's more fitting for anyone. I really do for him to break that mold. I can come up with a list of twenty names that I think are better than Undertaker, and, and that and the, if they would have had a longer career, would have had a longer legacy. Long oh if nuts and mean... butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, dick face. Oh, oh, count it. Dick reference, count it. He's so bad at me. He's so bad. He's so I mean, angry like, at me. I get your point of view there, Poot, but I don't know. Like, I, I think I'm tending to decide more on the side of beef on this just because, you know, 
Vince McMahon said it himself, the time-honored tradition. Uh, who left? Did I, did I leave? Hello? You're fine, I think. Uh-oh, Beef, did we lose I'm you? Back. I'm back. Okay. I'm back. I thought you my, I thought you stormed no. off in anger. I was like, oh boy. No, nah, I, I don't no, think he, my, Beef's not that mad. But like, my like point, I was saying my, there, Poot. Hold yeah. on, Beef, you settle down. Yeah. Uh, you know, Vince McMahon said it himself in the Bret Hart interview. It's the time-honored tradition. And you would expect, and again, I'm siding with Beef with this argument in, in that I would expect somebody who has been around as long as The Undertaker and has seen as much tradition and has upheld as much tradition as The Undertaker has, that he would be the, the best one to uphold that legacy of, okay, when it's my time to be done, you go out on your back. But I mean, again, if you look at you... all of the greats that did that, wh why? Why not The Undertaker? But again, like if, you if guys... you're going to count that as a great move, it's like, okay, if you're one of the greats, you go out on your back. Listen, I got gotta... If you're going to say The Undertaker is the greatest, he should be the one upholding that, I, I would think. Like that would be the the that would be the guy to uphold the tradition. Listen, I gotta race like a piss horse. Um, no, I? But uh, but my point is, again, if you look at it objectively, he did that. He did. He didn't. The, like you okay? He oh, gave no, up. The he streak. lost. He lost. He gave up the streak to Brock Lesnar. He gave. Yeah, up, the streak wasn't his career though. He gave up that. Like I, I just don't understand why this is a point of contention. Like I don't, I don't understand because it's like, what you do, man. Because yeah, that's, but, that's, that's yeah, the fucking tradition. You, yeah, you know what else you do? You know what else you do? What you do? Stone your stone your child for mouthing off to you. Like mm. you know, like I, I'm, I, I don't, I don't know how to put this. Like I just feel okay, like okay, okay. I but, feel but, like, but, but, if, but if you're the king who's in charge. And you're like, you have to stone your kids. And then, like, your kids do something and you don't stone your kids. Then everybody's going to look at you and go, wait, well, but you're but, saying but you're the one. You're saying aristocracy have have told people to do things and then they don't do things themselves. Man, that's All a right, weird that's a bad, thing. Right? Bad, bad comparison. But what I'm saying, especially, like, this was the most Undertaker way to go out. Like, to be buried, like, this oh, yeah. was no way. Finished. And then you show his hand coming up out of the grave, you know, question mark. Is that the end of the end? Who, you know, like that to me would have been like the fucking cheese on the fucking pizza, man. But and, and, and again, I, I understand what you're saying that the Undertaker um, supersedes all that. I, I, I have a hard time justifying that argument because, like I said, I have a list of maybe 15, 20 that I think have had a better career legacy of the Undertaker, uh, and 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 that would have if they if they would have stuck around. But uh, you know, as as far as career reinvention goes, like yeah, I, I guess you're right. He 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 has reinvented himself. But I mean, you know, fucking he doesn't hold a candle to Chris Jericho. What Chris Jericho has done with his career. <sighs> And, and reinventing himself, like oh, yeah. you're saying that because Jericho has gone different places. If negative, Jericho was negative Jer Ghost Rider, that, even even if he never went to, to New Japan or AEW, I, I would still make this argument because you had the fucking like, um, you know, the, the fucking like yellow tight wearing like white white face baby meat. Then you had the fucking you know the Lionheart. Then you had like the Chris Jericho with the beard in WCW, who was a total fucking yeah, dick. Yeah, I, I know all the, the I know Ralph's. all the iterations of Jericho. Right. I get so that. What I'm but saying like you're is say that so they you're were saying, wildly different. So too. You're saying, you're saying at the end of the day, you would have the exact same criticism for Chris Jericho if he didn't go out on his back in his last match. If he does not, and I, I guarantee he will. I guarantee he will. I. I I will stake a bet right now just, that he says he does. I just feel oh, like yeah. I, I, I feel like you're so salty over nothing. Like the, the if if the rest of the wrestling zeitgeist was was upset about this and bothered by this, I would probably be standing next to you and agreeing, well, and I'd be part of that it, as well. It, but I, look, I gotta one, piss no or one... I'm gonna pee my pants. Well, Go then ahead. you are. You have lost no, you the keep, argument. You keep, there. you keep going, beef. Like I want to, you know. I am. Because I want to hear your he, side of it. 
he, he, so the thing with Taker, when Taker won that match, immediately, like fucking two days later, they were like, oh, well, Taker says that he could do this for the next 10 years if they keep doing this, blah, 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 blah. And, like, no one even thought for a second that that was Taker's last match. And then, it like, you know, he has this fucking, like, six-part documentary about himself. Selfish, but okay. Like, you know, fucking, like... And, and, and I, I, I'm I I'm not going to take a piss on um, the, uh, the the last ride. I, I thought it was a great series. And it was super cool to see Mark Calloway talk about The Undertaker. A guy who had never fucking done that. Like, do it for, you know, six hours. Super cool. But um, my, my, my point is that, like, he basically fucking retired as, like, a quiet old man. Like, well, I think that, you know, I'm going to hang the boots up unless, under, unless Vince McMahon needs The Undertaker again. I think I'm just going to ride out in the sunset. Like, that's... It's going to shovel off. Yeah, like, that's just not it, man. Like, that that's not... Like, yeah, okay, he is in the conversation for greatest of all time, I guess. Um, like, it would take a lot of cajoling for me. That, that's all I'm saying. But, like, he, I, I, I could see people talking about his legacy being one of the great ones. But at the end of the day, like, you know, like, that does not befit the fucking Undertaker. To fucking retire, sitting in a fucking, like, claw chair, in this big fucking empty room, where he's just, like, like ten minutes after he said, I'll have to ask myself, do I still have it? Like, and, and, and that's that's an allegory, obviously. Like, that's not exactly how that transpired, but I mean, it's, it's right. you know, same fucking breath, you know? Like, this, this you, I don't know. To, to me, you know, you, you want that fucking, like, moment where The Undertaker is done. And then fucking, like, lightning strikes the ground. And then, like, you're left questioning, you know, have we seen the last of The Last of The Undertaker? Which, yeah, but see, you know, that's the thing is you want it left open because you want to hang on to that whole thing. This is done. It's done. Like mm. now, and I understand you said like like we've said. There's the pre the, there's the preconceived idea that it's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to leave that break in case of emergency idea. But, He'll be back. But He'll be like, back fucking next year, I guarantee it. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee next year, but he'll he'll be back. But if, like, if he hadn't if he hadn't done that shtick of losing to Roman Reigns, folding up the coat, taking off the gloves, setting it all in the ring, and then walking away, if he hadn't have done that shtick, I'd be more inclined to believe that this could be it for him. But that was more of a symbolism to me of okay, like he put over the young guy, he laid all of his stuff down. We've seen the last of the Undertaker. And and it wasn't even it wasn't even between that match and then he had the match with AJ Styles, you know he had that that stinker with Goldberg, he had the 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 Brothers of Destruction versus DX after that, yep, you know there were so many other matches after the symbolic I'm gonna lay this out, I'm gonna lay the Undertaker in the middle of the ring for everybody and I'm gonna leave. Like I just I don't think I can't imagine that this is it for him. I really Plus, don't. like I'm saying, like, you don't, you, you can't let a fucking mystical character like The Undertaker retire as a broken old man sitting in a fucking claw chair. Like, that's just not how that works. Well, and it, so you're, you're proving my point then. You don't leave him sitting broken in a chair. You have him go out on, uh, at, uh, at his best on top, standing well, strong, I mean, standing you can... tall. You can lose, and like, <laughs> I think back what they did with, with the uh, the casket match with, the, with, with Yokozuna. Because I thought that was a perfect way to kind of transition a character. But, like, when they're rolling him back the aisle, and the fucking coffin starts to smoke, and then the fucking lightning hits it, and you see his, like, quote-unquote corpse float up and, like, hit the Titan Tron, and, like, all of a sudden you see him inside the casket. Like, it's, you know, there's a lot... Of ways that 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 the Undertaker under here Undertaker could go Easy out for you to say, I know right that the Undertaker could go out and then still like quote unquote you know fucking like Skeletor and He Man like you know I'll be back like you know there there's lots of ways you could like end 
that character with like a question mark. I man, I, I don't just know, man. I just feel like it doesn't need to be done. I feel like the way it did. Listen, let's we're getting we're get we're we're pushing here. Let's talk about uh fight uh, uh fight for the fallen. Yeah, uh, that was a a fucking uh, great show, and like that's what I'm saying, man. A A W oh, put COVID. out. Oh no. Uh -oh. Uh, he's been COVID. Uh, a, a W has put out three incredible weeks of action, back to back to back. Um, I I think in the height of the Attitude Era, I think Raw struggled to put out three <clears throat> killer episodes back to back to back. Um, but Fight for the Fallen was a great show for a great cause. Um, you know, I really think helping. AEW is in a league of its own at this point. Yeah. I mean, you made a, you I mean, made a great point there, Beef. Like even in the 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 height of the Attitude Area, area, whoo, area, Attitude Area. Um, WWE struggled to put out the three great back-to-back -back shows, not just not just like three back-to-back pay-per-views, like three back-to-back -back Raws that were from start to finish amazing. And AEW, which you've said it before, hasn't even been around for a year yet. Or no, they have. No, well, as as a TV show, no, because they started in October. Okay, so yeah, so they haven't even been around for a year as a TV show have put out three back-to-back -back weeks of just all-star performances. I, I just, I don't know that AEW is getting enough credit because, good Lord, look into what they're able to do from viewership to <sighs> quality of work to turning a profit. Like, holy crap, man, they're really doing something, excuse me, they're really doing something right. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, you know, it, it's it, it it's nonstop. Um, it's I uh, I said in the chat last night that you know, AEW has no damn right to be this good all the damn time. And like, there are down weeks, of course there are, because you know, same with NXT, there are fucking down weeks where you go, okay, that was okay, passable. But I mean, it 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 it, it seems like AEW is able to mask those weeks. With a really killer memory, like next week seems like it could be a eh, okay week, but you have the Young Bucks versus Butcher and the Blade in a Falls Cut Anywhere match. I, I guarantee that match is going to be killer, like hundred um, percent. But yeah, I mean, like last night the the, the um, I'm sorry, FTR versus the the uh, the Lucha Brothers was amazing like anything the lucha brothers do sign me up for uh, it. look um, it was it was amazing when you look at the whole match but there was uh there was some stinkery stuff in there oh yeah well i mean you know pentagon and and, and and phoenix haven't been wrestling together for the last couple of months because you know covid um pentagon has been stuck in uh mexico uh i'm not quite sure how he's back in the states right now to be honest with you but whatever smuggled. i'll take him smuggled i I will take it. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there there were certainly some points where I went, oh, that, like the beginning of the match where um, he did the uh, the wheelbarrow like flip thing, and I was like, oh, that, that oh. Um, oh. There, 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 oh. There, there were a couple of those. But I mean, realistically, like it's the fucking Lucha Brothers, man. Like, you know, they're, they're it's, it's going to be worth it at the end of the day. And, 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 and I think that, that, you know, that match was incredible. Uh, I, I feel like, and then the aftermath with Kenny Omega getting beard poured on him was great. Um, you know, the, even even the women's tag team match was okay. Uh, showing, you know, start, starting starting to uh, to um, to put the the stuff out there for Allie and uh, Brandy Rhodes, which I think could be a great feud too. Um, you know, it, it's just like they're they're hitting on all cylinders right now. Uh, with the exception of Vicky Guerrero, um, but but the main event I thought was just 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 perfect. Um, you know, Moxley couldn't put down the machine. Um, Taz threw in the Taz threw in the towel for 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 Brian Cage, you not know, wanting him to get hurt any worse. Like it just, you know, the I I am now 100% believing that Brian Cage will be the guy that takes that title off of Moxley, and it will probably be it all out. 
I wouldn't Ooh. be surprised about that either, but when I is just... all out again? Uh, probably late August, unless they um, unless they pull a uh, you know call an audible. You know who knows at this point, but I oh, just okay. love the fact how salty you were. Vicky Guerrero showed up. <sighs> if there's one person that we don't fucking need, it's fucking Vicky Guerrero. You are wrong, you know what... motherfucker. You're wrong. Ooh. Okay. Oh, here's another good. Here's another good battle of the titans. Cosmic, cosmic entities collide. Good, Poot. I'm listening. Dude, what look. Happened? Okay. Here we you go. might hate her voice. You might find Cosmic! her obnoxious. But man, come on. I love, love that Vicky Guerrero is the mouthpiece for Nyla Rose. I, or, I I love it. I absolutely adore it. I think the it's fuck perfect out of here. because you're, it, no, you're, the problem you're is just trying no. To be you, you shut right your now. shut your no. I'm not because when she came out, I went, oh boy, this is great because I don't hate Nyla Rose, even though she's a heel and she does healy things. I don't hate her, like I don't, I don't like Do I don't think they hate what to put she somebody does with Nyla Rose to oh, get that heat. Yes. And, okay. and Vicky Guerrero is perfect for that. For the exact reason why Beef doesn't like her. He doesn't like her voice. He doesn't like her face. He doesn't like anything about Vicky Guerrero. And he's about to go on one of his big famous rants about how brr, 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 being in the brr, brr, brr. But like that's the that's the point of her being there is to make you hate her and thusly hate Nyla Rose. The reason we don't hate Nyla Rose as a heel is because she's so good. Like, she's so talented. Now, you have a reason to hate her because she's associating herself with Vicky Guerrero. You know you know what this actually reminds me of? What's uh, that? To me, to me, ready? I stole it from you, Beef. To me, this reminds me of um, Queen Charmel with King Booker. Like, I think Booker T, he was good as a heel. But when he was King Booker and and... Charmel was his valet manager, whatever. I hated her so much that I wanted to see Booker T get his ass whooped every single time those two came to the ring. Every single time. I don't care who Booker T fought. I wanted to see him get destroyed because I hated, I hated Charmel. And I hated Charmel because Charmel was so good at getting that heat. The way she would come out and speak and get people riled up like it, oh my gosh. I don't think I ever had such a major reaction to a heel that I had for Charmel. Like everything she did pissed me off. I, I just, I wanted somebody to just steamroll her. I didn't care who it was. I didn't care if it was a guy or a girl. I wanted to see her get flattened. Because she was so good at what she did. She was supposed to get that heat. And my goodness, could she get that heat. And, you know, I didn't see you Vicky Guerrero. You, you, you guys are going to sit here and tell me that, that Vicky Guerrero doesn't get X-Pac heat. No, I'm, I, I, no, huh? no, I don't have an argument there. I'm just saying I didn't see Vicky Guerrero come out. But if Vicky Guerrero was doing for you, Beef, what she did, what Charmel did for me, I could understand the hate. Like, I, I, I can understand your reaction of, like, oh, she's here. Because every time I saw Charmel come out, I'm like, oh, my God, Charmel's here. Ugh. But that was her job. Her job was to get that heat. And she, I, I played into it every single time she came out. Every single time. I never looked past it and went, oh, she's doing this. She's, she's supposed to do this. And, you know, like, who cares? No, I watched it. I watched every single segment because I couldn't stand her. Because she was that damn good. Right. And I, I so, you know, I don't know. I, Maybe that's what they're doing with Vicky Guerrero. Maybe she's that damn good at getting that heat. I believe that in the hands mm -hmm. of the right people, I think I may have misjudged her. I think that with the elite and Cody and Tony Khan, with, you know, Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, the, the, the whole fucking shebang there, Billy Gunn, I, I believe that she could be coached into something workable. 
But the problem is... Man, do you think she's just not good at what she's doing? Ransom. No. When did we invite Jim Cornette on this podcast? I mean, he was really taking the Jim Cornette mantle away from me, I feel. The problem is, is that it's burned into my fucking skull. The way that WWE used her. Oh, uh, okay. Which was, like, fucking the word excuse me 87 million times every single segment that she was on. Like fucking nails on a chalkboard. Well, yeah. It's like Vince was in her fucking ear every single time. Nope, in the middle of the sentence, say, excuse me. Like, I... I well, come on now, like, look. That's that's WWE's mantra, though. I agree. That's, and that's what they what do! Saying. The big dog! I, it's boss time! Oh, that's what they do! I think that I, I it may have been a knee-jerk reaction. Classic beef. Um, vintage beef, if you will. Vintage? Uh, so, so it may have been a knee-jerk reaction. I I should learn to trust an AW creative because they have not done too much wrong. Although I do have a pretty strong problem with what Cody's doing, but that's neither here nor there. Well, I do want to hear um, that though because I don't know what that is. <laughs> but finish finish with Vicky, and then I want to hear your just like Cody. Um, yeah, it, you know she. It, it's 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 possible that they will work her into something that's going to be more. But for me. Vicky Guerrero is, and always will be, X-Pac heat, which is just go-away heat. It's not like heat like Charmel had, where you're like, oh, I can't wait for her to get her comeuppance, you know? It's not like heat like MJF gets, like, oh, that fucking smarmy bastard, I can't wait till it gets popped in the mouth. Like, it's, oh my god, I can't believe she's on my fucking television again, in a fucking meaningful role. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to start fucking, like, flipping to NXT when she comes out. Like, that's how bad it is. That was my uh, initial reaction last night. So, like, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think Vicky does a good job. She didn't, rather, in WWE and getting heat. I think that she could be a butterfly. Who knows? Uh, if, if you know, the, the Elite kind of put the shackles on her a little bit, maybe we'll see something different. Maybe they'll just go with the old fucking hat, you know? Play 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 with the deck that, that, that brought you. So we'll see, that, but uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hopeful. Again, I, I think that I think you're not giving her enough credit, and I think it's because it, 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 it her, like the exact reaction and everything that you're talking about that she elicits from you is what she's supposed to fucking be doing. Like that's the thing is her purpose is being served, like. To get people you, to turn off AEW? It's yeah, not I, to turn... I, I, I think that's a different reaction, though, because, like, like you had mentioned, Beef, if she gets your reaction that you want to see her get her comeuppance, that's different yeah, than a reaction I of... I don't give a fuck about that. Right, yeah. Yeah, there, that's a, there's a different reaction between that and, uh, okay, nope, uh-uh, Vicky Guerrero's on TV, I'm, I'm flipping somewhere else, or I'm gonna go take a bathroom break, or, oh, this, I, is, this is my shower segment. Like, I'm going to go get my shower. So were you saying... I never had that reaction with Charmel. Charmel, I, I hated her, but I, I, I watched through every single promo of hers that I saw because I wanted her to get it. But you're saying, Beef, that she has... Vicky Guerrero has the heat that makes you want to go, yep. nope, I'm out. Yep. All right, so that's, like that is said, bad heat. It, it's, it's, it's... It's 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 unfair because I don't know the character in AEW, so I so I can't judge it. Um, but based upon what it was in WWE, like yeah, like all right, piss break, you know, bathroom break, fucking play on my phone for ten minutes while I'm totally zooming out of the television break, like so that is not good heat, and and I am damn sure that I'm not the only one who believes that she has X Pac heat. Um, I, so... man, I don't, I, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, Come I'm, on, do I, it. I'm not gonna argue you any further, cause we could just keep going about this. No. We absolutely Ew. could. We could just keep rolling on this, because I feel like you, I feel like you are so, like, one side, like, I, I, I never, I, I think it's because I had a different feeling. Whenever Vicky Guerrero came on the TV in the WWE, 
I never felt like I wanted to turn the TV. I was like, God, someone smack her. It's the Karen idea. Like, she's a Karen. She's the Karen of the wrestling world. Like, I wanted to see someone just smack her and say, shut the fuck up. Like, I never was like, she's doing a bad job. I was like, she is nailing this role. She is nailing that. Per because in IRL, apparently she's a very sweet, quiet person. And the ability to go out there and be that character and juxtapose your actual nature is, in my opinion, something to be lauded. Well, I don't... To, to Boy, it really feels like I'm taking Beef's side a whole lot tonight, which is unusual, but... I don't know that Beef is necessarily saying that. I think he's saying that if AEW does the same thing that they did, the WWE did with Vicky Guerrero, it's it's not for him. Like, I don't think he's discounting her ability to be a completely different character on TV. Uh, and again, you know, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth here, Beef, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you, what he's saying is that if she's the exact same character as WWE... That's not for him. Like, that character wasn't for him there. Regardless of the way she's able to switch it on on camera and, and switch it off back to, you know, her actual reality, you know, off camera, that's not the argument. The argument is... Well, that and that's, know, that's fair. She, he wanted to just... He wanted her to go away, and he wanted her to go away so bad, like, he didn't want to see her get her comeuppance. He wanted to just go away from what, what he was watching. All right, Which I don't, think is, I don't think and that is, uh, that's not, I agree, that's not good heat. You want people to, to tune in to see this heater and, and constantly watch them knowing that there's a possibility that someone's going to come out and just get them. Like, that's the kind of heat you want. You don't want heat to where it's like, oh, this person came out and, and did the excuse me 14 times. I can't stand this. I'm going to watch something else. Like, I think that's the opposite reaction that you want people to have. You want people to dislike them so much that they want to watch to see them get their comeuppance not dislike them so much that they want to go nope uh -uh, nope i can't i can't deal with her can't deal it beef crest out let's beef crest I, you know. out wow just that reference you are absolutely a domesticated uh fella anyway the how about this let's talk about something more positive we can all agree is fantastic yeah that's that's the the um chris that's the that's the problem that Beef has with Cody Rhodes. Well, okay, let's okay, talk about Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I want to know what that is. I'll drop into that. So, the problem with Cody Rhodes is, is it the title. Well, it's 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 how he's really handling the whole situation. So, the whole being champion is that it? Yeah. So the so so first of all, it seems like. Every person that comes up against Cody Rhodes ever is an up-and-comer. Like, from the beginning of AEW, every person, with the exception of Dustin, every yes, other person yeah. has been a up-and-comer. And regardless of the push that they've had, no matter how much that they have gotten over, no matter how hard they have worked, with the exception of Chris Jericho, everybody else has come just that close. And it feels like Cody's saying, you know what, for you to be just that close to me is a real win at your stage. It it, 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 it it was really prevalent with Lance Archer. Where Lance Archer comes in, big, big signing for them, I think. Uh, they lauded it very well. Uh, where was and, he before? Uh, a new, well, at WWE, uh, as Lance Archer. Or no, um, Lance... Um, Storm. I don't remember. Kate. Who? No. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hmm. get back to you on it. But, 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 he, but he was, um, he, he, he was there... And then he went to New Japan, really fucking discovered himself, and became a fucking badass. Uh, was um, this before NXT? Was he, like, an, an NXT guy, or was he, like, main roster cannon fodder? Uh, he was, like, main roster cannon fodder. Uh, okay. Um, but, uh, so he went to NXT. He teamed with um, uh, Davey Smith, 
and they were just fucking the the the, the piss beatingest people in the world. They were awesome. Lance Hoyt. And he broke out on his own. Lance Hoyt. That's the one. Yep. Okay. So, um, broke out on his own, became a real fucking certifiable badass. And then um, AEW snatched him up. And I'm like, fucking awesome. And then, like, he just careens through the TV title tournament until he gets to Cody. Cody beats him. Hasn't really been been seen on camera since. He hit and miss. He was on Fighter Fest a couple weeks ago, beating up Janela, um, which, you know, isn't, isn't really a, 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 an exclusive club these days. But, um, so, so that's, you know, okay. Uh, I, I, I think that Brody Lee came in with a problem with, no, I, I'm wrong about that. But like, you know, the, the, the TNT title, every single week, Co- Co- Cody's pulling the Cena here, where he, where he defends the title week in, week out. And, um, it's always been some, some like up and comer, you know, Jungle Boy, um, oh, uh, Mark Quinn from Private Party. This week was Sunny Kiss. And, like, they make the match look really great. But then at the end of the match, Cody just pulls it out by being a veteran. And then gives him the hug and, like, the pat in the head. Uh, good. You did a good job, son. Maybe someday. Oh. And, I think you're... I Okay, I'll let you finish. Never mind. Well, so I... So I and, and here, I'll, I'll reserve... And this is why I'm not big on the train right now, because I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment. Because I think they're going somewhere with it. I think they're really heading towards a pride goes before the fall situation. Or a Cody heel turn where he goes with Kelly Blanchard and literally reforms the four horsemen like we were talking about last week. All right. I see the arrogance in him starting and and, and, and I think it's heading somewhere. So we'll see. But I I I I, I f- I feel like Cody Rhodes doesn't need a title. And, oh, oops, I said his last name, sorry. Uh, oh, Cody I, with I Brandy like Rhodes, come on. Cody with Brandy Rhodes, uh, or, or with Dustin Rhodes, doesn't need a title. I feel like he is over that. And that's why we were all okay, all okay with Chris Jericho beating him with the stipulation of Cody, or Cody can never be a world champion. Because we're like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Same as the Bucks. The Bucks haven't touched the tag team title since they were introduced. They don't fucking need them because they're the fucking Bucks. So I, let me just ask you this real quick. I want to interject and just ask you this. Would your opinion on this completely change if the match out, like the matches happen the way they do? Cody wrestles young guys every week. You know, it's a good match, but he pulls it out at the end, gives them a hug, does it the pat on the head, like, hey, you'll get there, you'll get there, kid. You know, don't worry about it. Except there's no title. Like, if the match outcomes were the same, but no title was involved, would that change anything? Or I don't think or is so. It, or is it, because, because so it's, it's, still... not, it's not primarily because of the title, it's primarily because of how everything is ending up. It gives me a little bit of a Triple H vibe from, like, 2003, that's all I'm saying. No. Not, oh. not, oh, not excessively, but right. we're talking about a dude who has backstage pool, clearly, a VP of whatever... That's on like an 11, 11 match win streak. Like okay, like we get it, but I don't know. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I I could be wrong about it. It it could all be leading somewhere. And if it is, I will eat my words gladly. But um, you know, right now I I feel like it's not servicing anybody. So I, do you think it's I, do you think it's leading up to some big payoff though with this title? But he's constantly do. doing this, and because then finally someone's going to give him his comeuppance. Because They're going to take that title times, away from him, and he'll never see it again. There were a couple times last night where he was, like, doing the fucking cocky Cody Rhodes push-ups. And, like, he was doing something, and, like, Arn was, like, chirping at him. You know, like, or he, like, Arn was on the ring apron at one point, like, kind of directing him what to do. So, and, and, like, they would, like, cut to Tully Blanchard in the audience, like, kind of scouting talent. So, I, I think this is all leading somewhere... So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. All right. The, we're seeing shades of the cocky Cody Rhodes thing. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But the thing is, right now, and I think it's a slow burn, 
because you're seeing the yeah after the match he hugs his competitor and everything to me i uh i've been looking no. at that as um yeah don't try and pull my own joke on me that's tacky the um uh the thing is with the the way it 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 it, it kind of goes it uh, makes Cody. Good, it? it makes so, Cody. Hold you, hold you, stop talking. Track, didn't it? Stop talking for two seconds. Jesus H Christ, let me collect Go my on. thoughts. <laughs> Holy fuck! Like so, the the thing is, it's like it makes it look like Cody is a is being a sportsman, and if they do the slow burn with it, it's gonna make him look like an arrogant dickhead. So see, I came around. I'm agreeing with you. However. You see the matches like the one with Sonny Kiss. Sonny Kiss took him to his limit. Like Sonny Kiss put on a great match and took Cody. Yeah, Cody came out of the gate and dominated. And you're like, oh boy, is this going to be the first squash match we see where it's like Cody completely dominates. But I'm like, that wouldn't behoove Sonny Kiss. And I would think they were smarter than that. And by God, they, they had Sonny Kiss be... Very competitive and look like oh, Sunny Kiss could actually walk away with this belt, you know. But even that's for the thing. A brief that's moment. every match. That's that's every match though. Like Mark Nifty. Quinn. I'm glad I get to finish his... my thought. Like that's super cool. Like uh, real cool. Scat boot. Like, Sorry. So go ahead. My like my point is that's the thing is that they're slowly introducing these ideas that you're talking about. I'm not disagreeing with you. But it's one of those things we're so conditioned to the idea of like, oh, here's the heel turn, and it's very stark, and it's very aggressive, and it's very obvious. We're getting the slow burn. And and that's the thing is like we have to recondition ourselves to see the slow burn and, and feel these long-term booking ideas. Very rarely does AEW, and you would agree with me on this, would you not be, that AEW makes these knee-jerk reactions? No, they yeah, they... Quick they book and that's... They, they typically stay with these things for the long haul, right. And that's exactly the point, is that right now, you're starting to see the shades of, oh, Cody thinks he's invincible, and he's starting to bust out the golden shovel. Like, those little tiny things. But at the end of it, it still has the feel of, hey, you did a great job. Keep pushing. You almost took it. You're going to be great one day. Like, it still feels and has that air of actual sportsmanship and respect for your competitor. We're going to slowly see over time the change to where he'll pick up the belt and he'll go, he'll just give him a thumbs up and go, great job. You know what I mean? Like, even if they did take him to his limit, he's still going to get on his high horse. And whoever takes that belt off him then will get a rocket strap to their back. You mean next week whenever Zack Ryder shows up and takes the title from him? Okay, cool oh, beef. no. Is that happening? I mean, uh, the, uh, the no compete clause is up, I believe. Uh, if not now, very oh no, it's up this weekend because um, a whole bunch of people are going to be appearing on Slam Anniversary. So, oh boy, um, wait, which one yeah, is that? Is that see. TNA? Yeah. Oh okay. So you think um, Zack Ryder's showing up in AEW for sure? Oh for sure, for sure, for sure. Oh. Um, I don't, I don't, I really don't think that um, he'll be the one to beat Rhodes, but you never know. He, him, and him and Cody are buddy buddies. So, what better way to bring him in the fold than uh, you know putting the title on him right away? Um, so, do you do you think Cody will lose that at a house show or a TV, or do you think he'll lose that at a like pay per view event? Um, I think they'll probably do it on TV, uh, on on really? like uh, Dynamite. I do. Wow. Yep. Yep. Um. So let's do some picks here. Let's let's uh let's let's turn 180 degrees and do some picks here. Four. Really, really quick, can we mention how much of a treasure Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy are? Oh my God! Just, what did just... they do? Oh. <laughs> I completely missed this event. 
It was good. You should go back um, and watch it on the TNT just, app at any time. Yeah, go back. I was gonna oh. say just go back and watch it. It's hilarious, and it makes Orange Cassidy looks like look like a million bucks, and Chris Jericho is the demo god. Like he's just the best. Jericho on commentary is almost as good as Jericho in the ring, Fucking and I love hilarious. how AEW. I, I love how AEW can use Jericho and Taz on commentary. And they can, like, shut their characters off, except for, like, you know, little barbs here and there. Um, and that's That, to me, is just, just amazing. Um, but, yeah, no, Chris Jericho is the fucking treasure that we all don't deserve, but thank God, th- thank God we have him. Huh. So, Extreme Rules, the horror show, is this no. Sunday live on pay-per-view from the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Jam packed with some adequate matches that are sure to make you go, hmm. Uh. Let's start. I'll start with the Raw Women's Title. Um, it is Oscar, the champion, versus Sasha Banks. Uh, they could go a number of ways with this. Um, I believe that they could... Part of me thinks that they could put the belt on Sasha, so that Sasha and Bailey have all the gold, so that whenever the, the, the knife is put into Bailey's back, it makes it all the more important. Or, maybe Bailey puts the knife on Sasha's back. Regardless, um, part of me thinks that that we're gonna, that, that, that they're gonna go that way, but I think, um, this is... Oscar's big moment, and I, I I don't I don't think they're ready for that to end yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and say Oscar retains. Poot, what say you? I feel like if Oscar lost that belt, it's gonna be at SummerSlam. So I'm gonna say Oscar. Mr. Ransom. Yeah, I'm gonna Can't. I'm gonna agree and I'm gonna agree and say Oscar because I don't. It seems silly to have her lose this. If it's going to be a meaningful title loss, I think it needs to be at a bigger event than the disappointment show. The horror show. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, the other women's title up for grabs. Bailey, the SmackDown Women's Champion, versus Nikki Cross. Um, interesting um, wing that they're going on here. Uh, not going with Alexa Bliss versus Bailey. Um... But uh, they got Nikki Cross. I I think that that's just as good, really. Uh, Poot, what do you think? Bailey versus Cross, who comes away with the title and the oh, win? I, I, I don't think it would... Like, there are two thoughts that are going through my head. It's that... Oh, uh, I... Go on. Bailey's, Bailey's the champ. I think Bailey retains because then there's that level... What, the way they're going to go with it is... Banks doesn't get it. Bailey has it. And then it's the jealousy angle. And Bailey kind of lauds it over Sasha Banks. And it makes Sasha Banks the face and Bailey the heel. All right. Ransom? Yeah, I don't uh, I don't see the benefit of putting it on Nikki Cross, at least at this point. If you're going to have a big payoff that culminates between Bailey and Sasha, I don't. I don't see that. I don't see uh, Bailey losing the title now as a making any sort of sense. So I'm going to say Bailey. Patrick, oh, pardon me. Complete. I also pick Bailey. It does not make any sense for them for for Cross to beat her. <clears throat> so of course, we know that Cross is definitely going to beat her now. Um, oh, damn it. Apollo Crews. Hey, you don't need dope you... sheets. Just listen to this podcast. If we're the same across the board, the opposite outcome is happening. Yep. Uh, for the United States title, uh, Apollo Crews versus MVP. Uh, I read, by the way, that there's a theory that the new uh, uh, U.S. title that they have is not going to be the actual U.S. title, but rather the one that MVP hold on to, holds on to as, like, the fake title. Because um, Apollo Crews hasn't been seen the last couple of weeks, so who knows? Um, I think that'd be dumb and a waste of money, but, you know... What else has WWE been? But, um, no <laughs> Welcome money. to WWE. Exactly. So, uh, Cruz the champion, MVP the challenger. Um, Ransom, you lead this one off there, Brohim. Uh, 
I'm going to say Cruz. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, it. MVP is a nice, solid, like, you know, fill-in guy. But I, I, I don't see a reason why this isn't Lashley versus Cruz. With the exception of them setting up for SummerSlam as Lashley versus Cruz. And this is just, you know, a bump on the road. Um, with uh, with with MVP being the uh, the the brains behind Lashley, as it were. Uh, so no, I, I I am picking Cruz to retain. What about you, there, Pootski? Cruz. Oh. Said with as much conviction as a nine thousand year old ghost. So you know right. it's going to be MVP now. Listen, right, exactly. nine thousand year old ghosts have been around for a long yes. time. That's a lot of conviction. I know. Uh, the Swamp Fight, which, who the Ugh. fuck knows what that's going to be. Okay. Um, Strowman, the WWE Champion. Nope. The WWE Universal Champion. Versus Bray Wyatt, the Swamp Father, uh, in a non-title match. Uh, where Strowman has said that he's going to feed Wyatt to the Gators. Alright. Uh, I guess it's my turn to lead this off. Um... Agreed. Uh, I mean, I think Strowman. It, it, this 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 might be one of those ones where a win or loss is going to be a very kind of like not definitive, kind of like Firefly Funhouse. Yeah. Um. But 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 regardless, I think the Strowman walks away as the guy who looks like he's won the match. Because then it makes all the sense for the fiend to come back and fucking wreck shop at SummerSlam. Poot. Uh, I thought Strowman as well, um, because I like the idea that they're doing the whole faces of Foley thing with um, with Bray Wyatt now. But like you said, mm -hmm. this has to be like it. It has to be a culmination to where the fiend wins. And if Strowman's run through every other iteration of Bray Wyatt, it just makes sense to reestablish the Fiend as the strongest of the, you know, mental archetypes of Bray Wyatt. So, Strowman. Unless, of course, they let the muscle man Bray Wyatt beat Braun Strowman, which I'd be okay with. Uh, Ransom, what say you? Um, yeah, I'm going to say Strowman as well, because I just don't think this is the end for them. I think there's a much bigger picture. And like you said, Beef, if Strowman comes out on top here, I think it I think it lays the groundwork for The Fiend versus Strowman at SummerSlam. And if there's going to be any sort of legit match or title change, it would happen there and not here. And I just don't think this is going to be the blow-off match for those two. Nope. Uh, the WWE Championship match. Uh, stipulation TBD, although it has been rumored and leaked to be a TLC match. Um, which, if conventional TLC rules apply, the title is not suspended above the ring. It is just that tables, ladders, and chairs can be involved in the match. Stupid. Uh... Drew McIntyre, uh, the incumbent, versus Dolph Ziggler, the challenger. Um, poot. Now look, hold on. Abs before we make this stipulation, or before he picks this match, if this is a TLC match, there are no disqualifications, right? No disqualifications, no countouts, it's pinfall submission. It has correct? not been officially announced yet. Officially it is still TBD. But, it is but if it is, that, yeah, yes. if the rumors are no, true, then it's a no right. disqualification match. Okay, all right. Correct. It would be, I, look, you guys know, and I've made it very clear in the past how much I like Dolph Ziggler, but it would be erroneous to put that belt on Dolph Ziggler right now and take it off, off of Drew McIntyre. It has to be McIntyre. Come on. 
Ransom? Um, I'm going to agree with Poot. I, the, they're, look, they're ne- if Dolph Ziggler gets that title, he's not going to take it off of someone like McIntyre. But on the same token, if this is not a TLC match and there are disqualifications, I can see Dolph Ziggler winning via a DQ. I mean, he, he doesn't win the title, but technically he wins the match. So that's where I'm struggling a little bit because we don't know what the stipulation is going to be. It could just be cannon fodder that they're throwing out. Like it could be a, a red herring with this, uh, this TLC announcement. So I don't really know what to do. I mean, I definitely don't, I don't, I definitely don't think that Dolph Ziggler is going to walk out with the title, but as far as who gets the win and loss, ugh. Well, it's oh. so it it, it 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 is known that this is Ziggler's um, stipulation to pick. Mm-hmm. So it's probably going to be something. Yeah, I yeah, I don't think it's going to be a traditional match, but I'm going to say I'm going to say uh, McIntyre just because. If it winds up being a match where disqualifications, countouts, or whatever are not in effect, there's no way that Dolph Ziggler walks away with this title. It's just it's not going to happen. I want to pick Ziggler so badly right now, but with the suspicions that people have for Survivor or for uh, SummerSlam coming up, uh, I think that that's where um, the change is going to happen. So I'm going to pick McIntyre for now. What suspicions are those? Uh, that Randy Orton is going to be the guy who faces McIntyre at SummerSlam and uh, oh, okay. the title. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Uh, both doing two things: one, in, in, injecting the uh, WWE title into the Orton Edge feud when Edge comes back, and two, uh, giving McIntyre the opportunity to win the belt back in front of fans, which is something I've been saying all along. So. Yeah. Finally. Mm. The. Uh, P.S. de Resistance. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, the eye for an eye match where somebody's going to lose an eye. Okay. Um, I don't know a way out of this other than some, <laughs> some CGI and then some bullshit stuff down the road. Uh, there's no... Bum, bum, there's no easy way out. Um, Ransom, who you got? Mysterio versus Seth. No. Who wins the match? Who loses an eye? Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. I don't. I have no. I don't know what to do here. I really don't. Because I don't know if this is Rey Mysterio's he's done match. And, like, this is it for him. And, he, you know, he goes out on his back, minus an eye. You know, one step further than The Undertaker. Um, <laughs> damn it. So here's my thoughts. If this is Mysterio's last match, like, if he's going to be done, of course he's going to lose. Seth Rollins is going to hold up a CGI eyeball. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. And, uh, yeah, and Mysterio's done. He rides off into the sunset with, you know, half red mask. Which I don't know how they're gonna do that when they're so squeamish about blood. But apparently, I don't know how you take someone's eyeball without there being an exorbitant amount of blood just because gushing it's everywhere. Because a horror show. Uh, okay. Um. <sighs> I want to say I think I think we should put out a prop bet if if this ends up like Super Mario Two, where like we see fucking like Biggie or somebody in bed and like this is just part of their fucking like thought bubble. Oh, it's it would definitely be the Viking Raiders. It would be the greatest thing of of of, of all time if they did that. I, I don't think like they would the, have the balls to do it, but oh, uh, one of the Viking Raiders is curled up with a turkey leg next to them, just yep. dreaming that this whole thing yep. has happened. They wake up and all, you know, all sorts of shock and just horror and then realize, oh, it was just a dream. Takes a bite of the turkey leg, rolls back over, goes to bed. That would be great. 
that would probably be the best match outcome that I could imagine for this. Super, super tropey, but I, I'll, I'll talk about the whole thing, man. Like, like this, this whole thing, I, I think, is going to be a fever dream. Whole event. <sighs> okay. Um, going on the premise that it's not going to be a la Super Mario 2. <laughs> This is where I lose my title. Um, I'm going to say Seth Rollins because I'm going. I'm going with the thought process of Seth Rollins loses an eye, has an eye patch for a cup of coffee, and does a Monday Night Messiah thing and heals himself. And they keep rolling with this Monday Night Messiah gimmick, and they roll in the fact that he could perform miracles because look at what he did. Rey Mysterio took out his eyeball, but uh oh, I still have it. I'm healed. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Rey oh, Mysterio. No. I was going to say, yeah, so 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 if you're thinking that Seth's going to lose his eye, then it's going to be Mysterio. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go with Mysterio. I, this is, I know that this is going to wind up with... I've had a nice little run with this title, but this is where I lose it on this fucking catastrophe of a match. The horror show! Oh, um, come on. I no. think that the whole Seth getting his eye ripped out and then magically being healed as as being the Monday Night Messiah would be the absolute ballsiest storyline in the world. Um, but I just don't think that Vince has the great groups to do it. Um, so I, you know, Ray's working without a contract. Ray wants to get his son over in the business. This is how he does it. Um, so I think that Seth Rollins wins and <clears throat> plucks out Mysterio's eyeball and Mysterio is blinded for the rest of his life forever. And then um, Dominic Mysterio comes back and gets vengeance by taking Seth Rollins' head. I don't know. So Seth Rollins is my pick. I'm actually going to... Uh, I'm going to pick the Viking Raiders that it is all a fever dream. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, honestly mulling this over knowing we were going to have the picks um i i'm going to have to side with beef on this one Damn because it. i like it just makes sense because i think I, I i think the whole i healed myself thing is a little too ballsy and i think that it, it it's a good exit for ray it's something yeah is it does it behoove a legend like him no but again, it's the idea you go out on your back. We discussed this uh, before. Missing a limb. Yeah, you go out missing an eye. Um, and I think it it would it it it, it makes sense because then Seth can do the you know sycophant thing of like you know then like having a jar that has Mysterio's eye in it around his neck. Oh, oh Midian. Like you know, yeah, the Midian. No. But maybe he's looking at you. Maybe he's looking at me. Maybe he's looking at Boss Man. <laughs> <laughs> but like, oh. it's it's that <laughs> I it's that idea that it's like that I think would behoove something with Seth Rollins because instead of having it be cartoony insane, it's literally he's insane. Like he's like, do you see this? Do you see what I did to be great? like to be what I am and to say what I am. You know what I mean? So it I I think uh it's Seth Rollins. I'm going to agree with Beef on this one. All right. So, I want to change my I want to change my pick to Seth Rollins. Boo. I think you guys have talked me out of the whole Oh, boo. Healing himself Shut thing. up. All right. That's fair. Then I'm changing my vote to Mysterio. Cause I literally could see this going either way, and just for just for the sake of uh, being different, um, you know, we'll see. So I, I I will I will go out on a limb, no pun intended, and pick Mysterio. <laughs> Me too. That's so you're fine. Taking, you're I, you, you, Mysterio too. You guys have talked me out of the. Um, of the healing aspect of it. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. See, this is what happens when Beef is the scribe. He he lays the groundwork to, you know. 
Yeah, I see, changed my vote because Ransom did. Like, I, I, I didn't initiate this. There's, this, this, this is no fuckery on Beast's part. No, it's fuckery on your part because he changed his mind and you were like, well, I, I, I changed my mind too. What a coincidence. I, think we need to, I do think we need to set some ground rules going forward that says once you lock your pick in, it's, it's locked in. in. No, you know what? Let, no, no. All right. You guys pick, you guys pick, uh, Seth, let's keep it the original way. You guys pick Seth. I'll pick Mysterio. I'm not going to go back on it. And, uh, yeah. No, I, my original pick was Mysterio, so let's keep it with that. So there's no tomfoolery. There's no fuckery. I'll just leave it the way it is. I think I, I'm wrong, but I like it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to stand by mine. Okay. Cool. Now, are we well, going to do go. a prop bet that this is all a, uh, a fever dream? Nah. Like, do, you, do you really think that's going to happen? I You're don't. not even like saying it for picks. Like, do you? But do you think this is going to be like a, a legit, it happened storyline? I don't. No. I think. I think. I think. I think this actually happens. Yeah, they're oh. they're gonna they're gonna do it. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, boys. Uh, to to use my 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 lovely phrase, we're getting long in the tooth. What do you say we wrap this up in a burrito? Yeah, burrito would put You're more eloquent, so all right. Do the sponsor thing that that we've neglected to do. Yeah, we have not done our sponsor thing this whole one, and so I I I apologize greatly. And you know what? I'll do I'll do a little pre intro that uh, talks about our lovely sponsors. We want to thank Mr. Casual Gaming Sound. Uh, uh, <laughs> thanks for setting that up we want to thank Mr. Casual Gaming Dad himself, Mr. Tiger <laughs> Bomb Tom and his page Casual Gosh. Gaming Dad over on Facebook and uh, Casual Gaming Dad's Corner as well, check him out on Twitch and YouTube as well, Casual Gaming Dad 84 we want to thank Gould Gaming for having the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast t-shirt available for purchase your purchase, you, your purchase, listening to this, your purchase, available at Gould Gaming on Casual Gaming Dad's page. There will be a link in the description below. And uh, we want to also thank Mr. Sean Tischler and his work with IWC in Clearfield and in uh, Pennsylvania as well. And uh, we're glad to see that uh, things are kicking up and getting moving and uh, going again here uh, as gingerly as they can in COVID land. But um, do yourself a favor if you can. Uh, make sure you be safe about it. But go support your local indie wrestling promotion. That's where you're going to see your future stars, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you're supporting people's dreams and goals. So please go ahead and do that. Uh, Is it going to be a drive-in? Is that what it was? This IWC show? What? Was it going to be at a like a like a drive-in? Like you just you drive your car there, or is it going to be? I thought it. I was, thought Beef said that on the one show that it was going to be like a. I I'm I not know. entirely. I, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm. I'm honestly not entirely high. certain. Um. Uh, I'm not entirely certain, but still, you should go support your local indie. Yeah. Promotion. Check it out, regardless. Uh, Forget what I'm saying. I don't know what for, I'm doing. For Mr. Beef, the legend. Uh, for Mr. Uh, Casual Gaming Dad himself, Tiger, Uppercut Bomb Tom, myself, Poot the Bard, baby, and your reigning, defending, not for long, undisputed, choo choo choose your way champion, Mr. Alec Ransom. Thank you guys for listening to us. Make sure you like uh, and comment and subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're listening to us on any platform, make sure you keep an eye out for newer episodes. We're, uh, we're moving into shaking now again, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. And remember, Undertaker was right. Nut. No.